episode of Mrs. Seaford Vlogs. I'm Stephanie Crawford and I'm glad that you decided to come and stop by today. I want to take a little bit of time to talk about reflection. Now I know that there seems to be you know a million blog posts out there about reflection and everybody talks about it and we know the importance of it but I wanted to um, kind of talk about it in the aspect of having a gamified classroom and making sure you get student input in that reflection. So obviously reflection is important for us in so many ways. So if we never look at ourselves and what we're doing, we can't get better because we can't acknowledge the things that we're having problems with. And obviously none of us love having failures, but um, we have to say, okay, here was where I really struggled or here's where I thought it was gonna go great, but it fell flat. And then acknowledge what we could do to actually take that to the next step and make it better not just so that we feel better about it, but we do feel better when it goes well, don't we? Um, but so that our students are actually gaining something out of it. Because as much as I love gamification and I actually have fun with it, I'm doing it because my students actually benefit from it too. So I need it to be the best for them. So a part of that reflection piece that I think sometimes is missing is really making sure you get valid student reflections in there too for your classroom. Now, I'm not talking about just talking to one or two students or seeing whether they appear to be engaged in an activity. I really mean some meaningful feedback. And you have to put yourself out there, which can be so scary um, because you might hear things that you thought you were doing great or that they were having a great time with. And then once they give you that feedback, it's kind of like, ouch, okay, that wasn't going the way I thought it was. So the reason why that um, reflection is so important, getting the students involved, is because sometimes what it seems to be, those appearances, are different than the reality for them. So um, I have a couple ways that I have used reflection in the past to help um, really gauge student interest in ideas. Um, and I'm just going to pass on some of those ideas and hopefully you will find something helpful that you can use at the end of the school year here to make sure that students feel valued, that they have a voice in your classroom. And a lot of times I should say, I do open up reflection multiple times throughout the year. This year was a little bit different in the way that I went about it because it was my first full year gamified. But I think there is value in that process too, because again, so you might think something is going really well, but once you get their input halfway through the year, you realize there are some tweaks that could be made, some revisions to really help everyone have a better year. All right, so first of all, one thing that you can do if you haven't thought about it before is using a Google form for feedback. If you really like going digital and you don't want a paper mess, you don't want the clutter, you are a digital person, Google Forms is probably the way to go. You can create a form that has some simple questions on it and you can have multiple choice, but give them options for a short answer. I always think it's good to kind of limit what you want them to talk about too. So if you know that there's like a part of your curriculum that you have to teach, but it's hard, and that you would, when you ask students like, what's your least favorite thing that you learn, that that consistently comes up, not because they don't like how they're learning it, but because they just hate learning it. You know, it's a hard concept, it's difficult for them. You don't wanna ask that open-ended, what was your worst part? You wanna say, you know, you're focusing on maybe new elements that you brought in, but you're wondering if they felt they were successful too. So you can say, you know, if for instance in gamification, what mini game did you enjoy the most and why? Or um, which mini game would you throw out if you had your choice? You know, those type of things. Make them actual pointed to the tasks that you're wanting reflected upon. Um, again, open-ended broad questions can be um, interpreted differently by different people. So you want feedback that actually is going to help you, so you need to narrow it down, even if you're nervous about what they're gonna say. You know, for instance, I use sketch notes as my note-taking form in the classroom, and yes, I do ask for feedback on that. Now, some of the students hate them because they really feel like they struggle to put that icon, the artistic touch with that, and you know, it's hard for them when I, when I try to tell them, it's not about being an artist, it's about tying together those two sides of the brain. So at the beginning of the year, when we started this, I listened to them, I listened to their concerns, and then I said, okay, here's ways that you can get around that worry, you know, try doing this instead. But I also said, this isn't going away. I wanna try to address your concerns to make it easier on you so that you can, fe that you feel successful using this, but you're still going to have to do it. So just because they give you feedback telling you that maybe they don't 
really like what they're doing or they're frustrated with what they're doing, that doesn't mean you stop, but it means you figure out how to address that issue um, and keep going if you feel like what you're doing is valid and has merit. Um, so Google Forms are a great place to start with that if you want to be all digital. Um, again, the fact that it lets you choose different types of questions and also will put all of your information into a spreadsheet for you to go through quickly, nice and easy. I also like letting them write on paper at times. I mean, it depends on the group, but it can be a quick activity where I just put some questions on the whiteboard or on the smart board, and then they're responding with their own, you know, short answer. Here's what I think about this. Um, you can also have them brainstorm, so like put them in groups and you put a few topics up and you could even do um, sticky notes or post-it notes and say, okay, as a group, I want you to brainstorm what are the things that you like most about this? What are some things you like least about this? What are some suggestions you have? And then you have them already grouped into different categories that you want some feedback on. To take it a step further, after those groups have talked and reflected and left notes, then you have each group switch around to a new one so that they can look at the feedback that was left and they can add anything that they feel was left out. Or let's say that there was something that um, a group put that they really liked and another group comes around and was like, oh, I don't know, I see the flip side of this, they can leave that feedback. And if a group said they didn't like something about it, but another person comes around like, well, I really like that, they're able to you know, give kind of that counter argument of why they think it's valuable. So you are getting reliable student input at that point. That's probably my favorite thing to do because I feel like they're really getting to interact with the material, plus they're talking to each other. So if they in their mind were thinking one way um, just because they were stuck on one point about something, when they have that conversation, sometimes it opens them up like, oh, I didn't think about that. Okay, I see that. All right, all right. You know, and they have those conversations, those kind of like aha moments. So those are a few ways that you can include student reflection in your classroom especially at the end of the year it is so important that you get their feedback they've just spent an entire year with you what they say is valid you need to take it into consideration even if you don't change everything even if you change nothing you at least need to hear what they say and really reflect upon why they're telling you what they did and what they're saying all right, I hope that you found something useful here. If you have ideas that you use for student reflection in the classroom, I'd love it if you left it in the comments to let me know. And if you end up trying any of these forms for student reflection, I'd love it if you left a comment about that too. Thanks for joining me and I will see you next time on Mrs. Seifert Vlogs.